So I want to tell you another story about the iPhone XS, an iPhone that when it came out really wasn't that great of an iPhone, at least from my understanding, but it ended up becoming an iPhone that I actually ended up liking mostly because of the weirdness that Apple has been doing recently. Now, not every single day, you know, an iPhone that comes out ends up kind of showcasing its skill and ends up showcasing its and ends up showcasing its power throughout the long haul, usually when it first comes out, and that is when Apple will go ahead and focus in on the power and just say, hey, this iPhone can pretty much do it all. They'll give it a RAM increase, they'll give it a new chipset, and then, you know, we'll hear back from it, you know, a couple of years later, and then usually it'll get some cool features here and there, but typically it's not a big jump from its predecessor. It's only happened a few different times, but what actually ended up happening is, is that with the iPhone XS, when it first came out in 2018, it really wasn't that big of an update, at least from what I was understanding. It didn't really bring a crazy new body. It kept pretty much the same exact outside as the previous generation, except for a new gold color. But Apple ended up going through and increasing the you know actual RAM count by one gigabyte from three to four. But they gave it that Apple A12 Bionic chip, which I guess it was a crazy you know big jump from the Apple A11 Bionic chip, which was kind of already pretty fast in my opinion. When I compare the two, even to this day, it doesn't really seem like that big of a difference. But I guess I was proven wrong. What ended up happening was, was that for the next several generations of iPhones and iOS software with iOS, you know, 13, 14, you know, 15 now at 16, with the last two generations of software with iOS 15 and 16, Apple has continuously just kept pushing out more features than its previous generation with the iPhone 10. So when you compare the features that each of these phones got on iOS 15, the iPhone XS got several more features than the iPhone 10. In fact, I would say the iPhone XS got almost the same exact amount of features on iOS 15 when compared to the iPhone 13 of that time. So that was very interesting. But now even on iOS 16, it it is more or less the same exact thing. Apple is actually, if you compare with the features that the iPhone XS got to the iPhone 14s, of course there are way more features on the iPhone 14 before the iOS 16 exclusive features. It's actually very interesting to see how similar those features are on both of them. Like it's almost exactly the same. Of course there's like a few features added to the iPhone, you know, or 14, but they're almost the same. But when you compare those same things to the iPhone 10, the 10 to the you know iPhone 14, there are many features that are removed. So that makes me think that a phone like the iPhone 10s, although it's not the oldest phone, and although Apple may just be stripping features for no reason, it is still a very interesting thing. And you have to kind of give the iPhone 10s some credit. So the fact that this iPhone is getting all these features on iOS 16 when its predecessor is not getting those features makes me think that this iPhone is in a really good spot for the next probably probably two years, is probably still going to be supported for you know, the next few years as well. But it is very interesting that this iPhone ended up becoming an iPhone that I actually kind of liked when it first came out. I really wasn't the biggest fan of it. So I would love to hear your thoughts about this. Let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.